So, Slope, again, this is nothing you haven't seen before, all right? Uh, I'm going to teach it to you like you've seen it before. I'm sorry. You should know how to do this, and I'm going to make it quick. So, Slope is denoted by the letter M. Uh, it's a non-vertical line is the ratio of the vertical change, the rise to the horizontal change, the run, all right? So, if I have two points, it's how much does it go up, the rise, or the difference in my two vertical components and over the run, the difference between my two x's or horizontal components. So you can see here's the big formula, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, and again it's rise over run. We've done this a bunch, but you know, it is what it is, right? So let's take a look. All right. So find the slope for each, then tell whether it rises, falls, is horizontal or vertical. So without using graphs, you should be able to tell a lot of information from the slope, and that's a point where some of you need to get better. So let's do our little formula. I'll write it here. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Remember, these are x's and then y's, x's and then y's. Typically, these are going to be the first, or excuse me, the first point, so x1 and y1, and this is the second point, x2 and y2. Really doesn't make a difference, you'll get the same answer, all right? So negative 4 minus 5, y2 minus y1, over negative 2 minus 4, x2 minus x1. That gives me negative 4 minus 5 is negative 9. Negative 2 minus 4 is negative 6. And of course, with slope, you want to reduce, and we like fractions with slope. So we're going to have 3 over 2. All right, so that is a slope. Now let's talk about that. That's a positive number, right? So it's a positive slope. So when you think positive, you need to understand that as it goes to the right, if I have my x and y axis, as I go to the right, it rises. All right, it would rise. So positive would always rise because it'd be like this, up 3 over 2, up 3 over 2. It's always going to rise no matter what um, kind of positive number it is. All right, let's try the next one. y2 minus y1, 3 minus 5, over x2, 10 minus x1, 4. 3 minus 5 is negative 2, 10 minus 4 is 6, and that reduces to negative 1 third. All right, so that's a negative number, right? So we need to understand that negative is the opposite of positive. So these are all going to not rise, but these are all going to fall. So this one falls. Let's take a look why. If I'm anywhere, let's say I'm right here. If I go down 1 and over 3, down 1 and over 3, it's going to look like that. It's going to fall as I go to the right. Down 1 and over 3. It doesn't matter which this is, remember, that's very important. That negative is either negative 1 over positive 3. We can write it like that. Positive 1 over negative 3. We can write it like that. Or most of the time, we just write it out into the front. This front does not make both negative. If we're both negative, that would make it a positive because a negative divided by a negative is a positive. You need to remember that. It's one of the things that really is a pet peeve of mine, seeing kids still make that mistake. And you shouldn't make that mistake by now, You all right? So let's take a look over here, try this one. y2 is 10 minus y1 is 8. Uh, x2 is 4 minus x1 is 4. 10 minus 2 is, uh, or 10 minus 8 is 2. 4 minus 4 is 0. I'm not allowed to divide by 0. There's no groups of 0 and 2, so remember that is undefined. All right, now let's take a look on our graph what kind of line that is. There is a change of 2. So let's just say I start here. I go up 2, but I go over none. I go up 2, I don't go over. So these are vertical lines. All right, so vertical lines. Anytime you have an undefined slope, you need to know that it is a vertical line. All right? That's the part that I think you guys need to be understand better. Okay, you can get the slope, but you understand it always is going to go up and to the right. Is it, if it's a negative, is it always going to go down and to the right? If it's undefined, it's always a vertical. I wonder what this one's going to be. Negative 2 minus negative 2 over negative 3 minus 6. Negative 2 minus negative, that's 0 over negative 9, which is 0. 
So let's take a look at our graph. Say I start here. If I go up and down zero, but over nine, that's a horizontal line. All right. So anytime you have a slope of zero, it's going to be horizontal. All right. Good. All right. Now we have two kinds of special cases with lines. We have parallel lines. And lines that are parallel, if and only if they have the same exact slope, take a look right here. If I have my coordinate plane, and we know parallel lines never, never touch. And the reason being is I go up 2 on this one and 3 over. I go up 2 on this one and 3 over. They're never going to cross. So if you ever have two lines and the slopes are the same, they are parallel. Perpendicular lines. Lines are perpendicular if and only if their slopes are negative reciprocals of each other. That means I can take the slope of the first, multiply it by the slope of the second, and it gets negative 1. All right? Now, that's what you need to understand. A negative reciprocal looks like this. 1 over 4, the reciprocal, I flip it, 4 over 1. If 1 over 4 is positive, then this has to be negative. Those are negative reciprocals. If say I had negative two thirds, the negative the negative reciprocal of negative two thirds would be flip it three halves, and negative would become a positive. All right, so that's perpendicular. If you see that, it's perpendicular. If you see this situation where it's like four fifths is one slope and five fourths is the other slope, that's absolutely nothing. They're not perpendicular. They're not parallel. They're going to cross, but nothing fancy. All right. All right, so let's do some. Are the following parallel, perpendicular, and either? So we have line one. So I have to find slope one here. Uh, negative one minus two. Zero minus negative two. Negative one minus two is negative three over two. All right, let's find slope two. Three minus negative one. And then two minus negative four. 3 minus negative 1 is 4. 2 minus negative 4 is 6. So if I look at this right now, <clears throat> it doesn't look like anything very good at all. Of course, I need to reduce. 4, 6 is the same as 2 thirds. Now I can see the relationship. These are negative reciprocals. Therefore, they are perpendicular. And sometimes you'll see me write shorthand for perpendicular as an upside down T. All right, uh, all right. Let's take a look at this one. Find the slope of the first line. Negative three minus two. Four minus one. So negative three minus two is negative five. Four minus one is three. Find the next one. Negative two minus three. And negative 1 minus negative 4. All right? All right. So negative 2 minus 3 is negative 5. Negative 1 minus negative 4 is positive 3. They're exactly the same. Therefore, the lines are parallel. And shorthand for parallel, two lines running right next to each other like train tracks that are never going to hit. Parallel. All right, rate of change. Rate of change is slope that represents how much one quantity changes on average relative to the change in another quantity. And the units are important. Basically, I'm just, it's the exact same thing as slope. We're going to find two points, and we're going to calculate the slope. We're going to label it a little bit differently, and we may not use fractions in this because they're real-world situations, and a lot of times you don't see for like two-thirds miles per gallon. All right, but... Uh, so we'll probably do decimals, but otherwise it's just slope, all right? So let's look at the problem here we got. Whoa, where are you going? All right, just X this out. All right, so here we go. So what's the rate of change in the diameter over time of this tree? So from in 1965, it was 137. In 2005, it's 141 inches. So let's take a look here. So we have two things. We have time and we have inches. Now the question is which is x and which is y? And it'll tell you. What's the rate of change in diameter over time or per? 
So time's going to be the, on the bottom, and what's the bottom? X. So this is going to be Y and X. So this is essentially just the point um, 1965, comma, 137. This is the point 2005, comma, 141. All right, then we can do our formula. 141 minus 137 over 2005 minus 1965. And we will get 0.1. Now, I could have had that as one-tenth, but this is ready to change. So 0.1, and then the units are important. What's on top? All right, inches. So 0.1 inches per year. All right, I don't put inches over year. I want that word per is pretty important. Predict the diameter in 2065. Well, right now in 2005, it's 141. And on average, it's going to grow 0.1 inches, right? And how many years? From 2005 to 2065, that's 60 years. So 60 times 0.1 is 6. 141 plus 6 is 147 inches, all right? It's not growing real fast, is it? Right, so let's look down here. A car uses three gallons of gas for 50 miles on one trip and uses nine gallons of gas for 140 miles on another. What's the average rate of change in miles per gallon? Miles per gallon. Miles is on top. That means it's a Y. Gallons on bottom. That means it's an X. So 350 is one point. 9, 140 is the other point. So we have 140 minus 50 divided by 9 minus 3, right, we get uh, 90 divided by 6, which is, I believe, 15, and the units are important here. If you don't have the units, it's not right, miles per gallon, all right? All right, so pause the video right there. I want you to take a second and try these two. All right, welcome back. Let's see what we got. So we need to find the line, the slope of the first line. So that's 0 0.2 minus 3.2 over negative 2.5 minus 4.5. So we get uh, negative 3 on top and negative 7 on the bottom, which is positive 3 over 7. Let's find the slope of the second one. That's 0 minus 3 on top. 10 minus 3 on the bottom, that's negative 3 over 7. Negative 3 over 7 and 3 over 7, they're not equal, and they're not negative reciprocals, so this is neither parallel or perpendicular. All right, after two months, a bamboo plant was 1.7 inches tall. After eight months, it was 12.4 inches tall. Find the rate of change in terms of inches per month, so inches per month. Inches means that's the y months. There we go. So 2 comma 1.75 and then we had what's the other one? 8 and 12.4. So 12.4 minus 1.75 over 8 minus 2. Whoops. That's an easy one on the bottom. That's 6. On top that's 10.65. And then divide those, and I think you're going to get 1.775 inches per month. All right, there you have it. I'll uh, end with a uh, little silly video on uh, hopefully helps you remember slope if you don't already remember it. Otherwise, I'll catch you on the flip side later. Math equation slope 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 the slope from in the sky Hey math equation slope 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 from in the sky There is a formula you can use to find the slope which is usually represented by letter M this is no joke The slope of a line is the difference of the y's over difference of the x's you take a point, label it X1 and Y1. Take a second point, label it X2 and Y2. Then subtract the two. The Y's will give you the rise. The X's give you the run. This is called the slope. The slope formula.
love is super easy and helps you find rise over run the slow formula is super easy when it's done it can be fun x2 minus x1 is the run 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 the slope formula style formula style slope 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 the slope formula style slope 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 the slope formula style slope 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 the slope formula 